Today I'm going to show you guys how to set up flight modes in clean flight and beta flight. And as you can see from the screen behind me, I'm actually using clean flight today. <laughs> that may surprise some of you who have not seen a green colored configurator on my channel in quite a while. Well, the reason I'm doing it is that I just finished building this Cheerson 117 2S micro uh, quadcopter. And it's got an SP Racing F3 Evo, and it comes with Clean Flight on it. So I figured as long as I've got it, let's show Clean Flight some love, right? The steps I'm going to show you will work the same whether you're using Beta Flight or Clean Flight. And I'm going to be using my Tyrannus, of course, uh, to give you the demonstration. But in general, the steps I'm going to show you will work with any transmitter you've got, whether it's a Tyrannus or a Spectrum or maybe a FlySky, uh, as long as you have some way of putting an aux channel onto a switch and getting that to come out the, uh, the transmitter and go into the receiver. So the steps for getting the aux channel and the switch mapped together are going to be unique to, uh, to my Tyrannus, but then if you can figure out how to do that on whatever transmitter you've got, everything else in this video will apply. Let's start by talking about the Tyrannus's architecture and how it arranges inputs and outputs. So in the Tyrannus, you've got inputs, which are sticks and switches and switches and pots. These are all inputs. And you've got outputs, which are the channels. And if I press the page button a couple times, I can get to the channel monitor, which shows me the value of the output channels as I move the various controls. Okay. And those channels are, are you know, they're channels 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, right? The traditional numbered channels. And essentially what you do in the Tyrannus is you map an input to an output channel. And there may be several different steps you can go through as you go through that process, uh, but that's generally what you're doing. You're taking an input and you're mapping it to an output channel. Now on the Tyrannus, any input can have any function and it can be mapped to any output channel. It's completely flexible and completely up to you. And that can be a little bit overwhelming for some people, especially people who are new to the hobby. On other transmitters, what they will do is they will assign a function to a given switch. And uh, they will allow you to assign the function to a channel. But perhaps the, the switch's function is fixed or the channel is fixed. So for example, on a given transmitter, uh, channel 6 will always be the flaps channel. And you can assign the flaps function to any switch you want, but channel 6 is always the flaps channel. Uh, the flip side may be that a given switch is always the gear switch. And you can assign the gear switch to any channel you want, but you can't change the fact that that is the gear switch. The key thing as you're trying to figure this out, if you don't have a Tyrannus, is you got to figure out how to get the input you want onto the output channel that you want. Or if you can't change the output channel, in some cases the, the, the switch may be locked to a given channel. If you can't change it, that's fine too. Just figure out what channel it's on and you can work with it in clean flight. I'll show you how. We're looking now at the mixer screen in the Tyrannus and the mixer is where the various inputs are all shuffled together, sliced and diced. Any, any logic that needs to be done on them is done. And then they're assigned to a given channel to be output. And you can see here we've got channels 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, etc. And I've got uh, my basic rudder, elevator, throttle, and aileron on channels 1 through 4. And then in clean flight, channels 5, 6, 7, and 8 are going to be referred to as aux 1, 2, 3, 4. Of course, you can change that in the channel mapping. And people will often change the channel mapping for the rudder, elevator, throttle, and aileron. But generally, they don't change the channel mapping for aux 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's almost always the case in clean flight and beta flight that channels 5, 6, 7, and 8 are going to be aux 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, you can see here I am uh, using all four of those aux channels. But for the sake of this demonstration, let me just delete one. So I'm going to go ahead and delete switch SD here. And let's say that I want to set up, that's going to be aux 3. And I want to set up aux 3 to be controlled by a given switch. For example, switch SD. It's very simple to do that. I'm going to hold down the Enter key, and that will insert a new mix. And then I'm going to go to the source, and that's going to determine which of these controls is the source for the mix. And that's going to just be any of the switches that you want. All I have to do is hit Enter one time. That's flashing now, which indicates I'm editing it. And then if I just move the switch one time, it fills in whichever switch I moved. See, now it's switch SC. 
I'll move the switch again and go back to switch SD. So just move the switch you want to assign one time. Now that's the simplest thing uh, that can be done. It's just been done. And now switch SD is controlling channel 7, which is aux 3 on the uh, in clean flight. So then if I go into clean flight and I go to the receiver tab, you should see that as I move switch SD, aux 3 moves. And you can see that it moves according to the three positions that the switch is in, uh, up, middle, and down. That channel takes on three values. Now, that channel, you can see I haven't got the endpoints set perfectly, 1,000 to 2,000, with a center of 1,500. You see the center is 1,517, and the top end is 2,027, and the bottom is 1,007. That doesn't actually matter for aux channels, because as you'll see, we're going to configure the aux channel to be exactly how we want it. It's only really the four main control channels that it's mandatory that you set the endpoints to 1,000 to 2,000 with 1,500 in the center. So now I'm going to go to the Modes tab. I've assigned my switch to a given aux channel. And now I'm going to go to the Modes tab, and I'm going to determine what that aux channel is going to do. And let's say that I'm going to make that switch control the beeper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the beeper mode, and I'm going to hit Add Range. And then in this pull-down, I'm going to choose which aux channel I want to control this function. Now since I assigned switch SD to aux 3, and I want switch SD to control this function, I'm going to choose aux 3 here. And you can see now that this little green marker, or if you're doing beta flight, it's a yellow marker, that marker is showing the current state of the channel. So as I move the switch, you can see it moves, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this slider so that it covers the range of values where I want this function to be active. So let's say that I want the beeper to be active when the switch is in the middle position. Well, I would just leave it alone. That's not actually very interesting. Let's say I want the beeper to be active when the switch is in the down position. You can see that in the down position, the channel is right here. The marker is right here. I'm going to move this slider over. And you don't want to be too, you don't want to be too precise. Like you don't want to really, oh yeah, yeah, just give it a little, give it a little breathing room. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to overlap two functions like that. You can see now the, the, the beeper would beep when the switch is either in the middle or the down position which if that's what you want, then that's what you should do. But we want the beeper to just beep when the switch is in the down position. So we're gonna put the slider like that and we can save. And now this, this copter doesn't have a beeper, thank God, because you'd be listening to beeping for this whole video. But you can see that the beeper mode has turned green, indicating that it is active right now. What if I wanna do something else with this switch? Let's say that I want, uh, oh, how about we're gonna make this switch have angle mode. I don't know. this. You really wouldn't want to put the beeper and angle mode on the same switch, but you could do that. I'm going to put the switch in the middle position. I'm going to say aux 3 is controlling this mode, and I'm going to leave. There you go. I just have to leave this right in the middle. And if I save, you can see that when the switch is in the middle, angle mode goes green. When the switch is down, the beeper mode goes green. And when the switch is up, none of the above. Another thing you can do when setting up these modes is you can overlap these ranges. So you can see here that I will have angle mode whenever the switch is in the middle position. Let me just save this real quick. I will have angle mode whenever the switch is in the middle position. And when the switch is in the down position, I will have both angle mode and the beeper. So by overlapping the ranges, you can have sort of whatever logic you want. Another trick that you can do is you can actually drag the mode entirely across the whole bar. And for example, for air mode, I commonly do this. So let's say aux 3, air mode, and save. Now what's that going to do? That's going to make air mode be active regardless of the switch position. And that's just a way of permanently turning on this mode if that's something that you want to do, which in this case I, I typically would. So there you go. Those are the steps to controlling a flight mode with your transmitter in clean flight and beta flight. Number one, decide what switch you want to control the mode. Number two, use your transmitter's configuration to cause that switch to be associated with an output channel. Then whatever aux channel that output channel corresponds to, assign a flight mode to that using the, uh, the range sliders to choose what switch positions activate that mode. Now that you know how to set up modes, the next thing to do is to learn how to set up in-flight adjustments. But that's a topic for another video for now. Happy flying.